Ani. Hello. Bonjour. I'm Angela, and I'm the Indigenous Coordinator for the Early On Child and Family Centers in Simcoe County. And today, I've come together with three of my friends, and they're going to help me with our video today. So, how about we have... Jen, how about you do your introductions first? Hi, I'm Jen. I'm from the Early On Child and Family Centers, and I work for E3 Community Services. Hello! Perfect. Thanks, Jen. And uh, Margie, would you go next? Hi, everyone. My name is Margie, and I'm with Early On Child and Family Center, Simcoe North. Hi, Margie. And last but not least, Leanne. Miigwech, Angela. I'm Leanne with Empower Simcoe Early On Child and Fam Family Centers in Barry Innisfil and Bradford. And it's wonderful to be with all of you again. And I was hoping before we start, Angela, that we could start with a shared land acknowledgement. The Simcoe County Early On Child and Family Centers acknowledge that we are situated on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe people. The Anishinaabe include the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi Nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We are dedicated to honoring Indigenous history and culture and committed to moving forward in the spirit of reconciliation and respect with all First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people. Miigwech, Leanne. So just before we move forward with our smudge, I thought it would be uh, a good time to share some information with you. So June is National Indigenous History Month, and that's why we're together. June 21st is Indigenous Peoples Day. And so part of all of that celebration um, you know, I wanted to share with you some information about what a land acknowledgement was all about. Um, it goes back to 2007, when the largest class action settlement in Canada, entitled the Indian Residential Schools Settlement Agreement, began to be implemented. One part of this agreement was to establish a Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada, the TRC, as it's been commonly known now, um, and it had recommended 94 calls to action. Now, one of these calls to action states that it's a necessary step, first step, um, in honoring our first occupants of this place that we live in. So land acknowledgements were born. The first land acknowledgement um, acknowledged the first people whose traditional ter territories we live and work on. Um, the land acknowledgement statement recognizes and respects Indigenous people and as traditional stewards of the land, so they take care of our land, um, that's their job, shall we say, um, and they do a fine job at it. Um, it's uh, some of the rest of us that need to do a little bit of work on that and take care of our trees and plants and animals. So we're on that road and I'm so glad. Um, and, you know... Um, I was at a conference not too long ago, and uh, Bob Goulet, Anishinaabe from Nipissing First Nation, he's a speaker and a traditional teacher. He said, Indigenous people know all about land acknowledgements and, and the land. He said the land acknowledgement is for non-Indigenous people so that they can consider, help them be aware and be mindful and to show their appreciation. Land acknowledgement statements can and should be read at the beginnings of meetings, conferences, courses, and any sort of um, presentation that might be happening. So I'm hoping that that little bit of information um, will help you want to seek out more information about land acknowledgements. And uh, by all means, reach out and uh, um, you know if you need any more information, uh, you can talk to any one of us and uh, we'll be able to get you that information. So from here, let's move forward and let's do our smudge. So in my bowl, I have some white sage. I'm just gonna stand it up here. I'm gonna tip my screen just a little bit so you can see what I'm up to.
And now I'd like to offer the smudge to you. Miigwech, and I hope that this allows us to set good intentions for our session together today. I'd like to share with you uh, our three languages song. So uh, I will sing our welcome song in English, French, and Ojibwe. Hello everybody and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello everybody and how are you? How are you today? Bonjour mes amis, comment ça va? Comment ça va? Comment ça va? Bonjour mes amis, comment ça va? Comment ça va aujourd'hui? Ani, 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 ani shna, ani shna. Ani, 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 shna, ani, shna. Oh, miigwech, Margie, that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. So today I brought along my drum and I thought maybe we would do a couple of songs. So we always give it a little uh, warming up time. And, oh, <laughs> Leanne, I see you brought something to drum along with too. Um, and if you have sticks and you want to tap along, Jen brought hers and uh, Margie brought hers. And if you don't, and if you have a shaker or a container that you can put rice in, that's okay too. So here we go. We're going to start with our four honor beats. Wendayaho, Wendayaho, Wendaya, Wendaya, ho, 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 hey, ho, hey, ho, ya, ya, ya. for playing along. That's the Cherokee morning song and it was gifted to me by my knowledge keepers on Georgina Island. And now I have another song I wanted to share with you. So this one's called the Cedar Song and it honors our cedar tree which is one of our sacred medicines and it was gifted to me by my elder Judy Montgomery. So here we go. Hey dip dip in da you a ho a ho. Hey dip dip in da you a ho a ho. Hey dip dip in da you ho. Hey dip dip in da you ho. Hey dip dip in da you a ho a ho. A ho a ho a ho a ho. Hey dip dip in da you a ho. Thanks for playing along. Angela, I love that song and uh, the cedar song always reminds me of the cedar bush I have outside of my home that every morning I get to enjoy uh, listening to all of the chickadees singing their beautiful song. Is it okay if I share my favorite chickadee song with you? Oh, I would love that. Miigwech, Margie. Thank you. So we're going to hold up three fingers for my three little chickadees and we'll start with counting them. One, two, three. 
Badget, Nish, Swift. Three little chickadees looking at you. One flew away and then there were two. Chickadee, chickadee, happy all day. Chickadee, chickadee, fly away. Two little chickadees sitting in the sun. One flew away and then there was one. Chickadee, chickadee, happy all day. Chickadee, chickadee, fly away. One little chickadee sitting all alone. He flew away and now there are none. Chickadee, chickadee, happy all day. Chickadee, chickadee, fly away. But don't be sad, they come back every day and they bring many friends. And uh, I love waking up to hearing them sing their happy song. It's a great inspiration to start every day. Thank you. You know, that, uh, that song reminds me of a story. Can I tell you my story? All right. So my story is about how uh, and why do chickadees stay here in the winter and they don't fly south. So Nokomis thought that this would be a really good story for us to talk about today. So here we go. A long, long time ago, there was a little chickadee by the name of Nishima. Now, Nishima, he liked to fly all around and go high and fl flip around and go slow and low and dip and dive. But one day, he wasn't paying attention and he went bang! right into a tree and he fell down and he hurt his poor little wing oh poor nishima what is he going to do he can't go and get his food oh no well his mom she knew what to do she would go and find seeds and she'd bring them back and she'd feed him and then you know what? Even his dad, he would go with and find seeds and he would come and he would bring them in and, and feed them. Now, poor Nishima, he tried to fly and no luck. And it was starting to get colder out. And do you know what happened when it gets cold? All the big birds, like Mr. Raven, he starts to get together with his friends and he flies away. He flies south and he's not the only one that goes. Goose goes and even the eagle goes and they fly south for the winter. Well, Mama knew that poor Nishiba, he wasn't going to be able to fly anywhere. So she went looking for a home. Well, she flew and flew and flew and she came upon the birch tree. Mr. Birch, Mr. Birch, she said, uh, do you have room for my family to live in your tree over the winter? Oh, he said, no, go away. I don't have room for you guys. I have too many of your other friends here. Well, the mom was not very happy about that. That wasn't very nice, but she understood because there was no more room in the tree. So she flew along a little bit further and all of a sudden she came to another tree. Hey, Mr. Oak, Mr. Oak, do you think you have room for my family to live in your tree over the winter? Well, Mr. Oak said, you know, I have a lot, a lot of your friends living here and there really isn't room. Um, I have some of your squirrel friends living in the tree and uh, some of your other bird friends, there's just no room, I'm sorry. Oh, poor mama, she was getting frustrated. Oh, what will I do? Where will my family live over the winter? They can't fly south. Remember, poor Nishima is hurt. Oh dear, oh dear, just then, she heard a voice. Hey, Mama Bird. Yes, she said. Uh, come over here. I, I have something to tell you. 
okay, so she came over to the tree. It was the cedar tree. He said, you know, I have some room in my branches for you. And I have seeds, seeds that you can eat. Oh, seeds? Yes, look, there they are, little brown seeds. And you'll be able to stay in my tree all winter long and I'll keep you warm and safe. Well, this made Mama Bird really, really happy. Now they had a place to stay. So she flew back and she got Nishima and she got Nishima's brothers and sisters and they would hide in the cedar tree like this and even the dad he had a place in the cedar tree too well you know after the long winter passed Nishima was feeling much much better and he was able to fly again but when the big birds came back mama bird said you know you don't have to fly south anymore you can stay here stay here Yes, Mama Bird said, yes, there's room for you here. The cedar tree has been so, so kind. So, so kind. Look, you can stay with us in our tree. Well, that made the Cardinal really happy because now he had a place to stay here and he didn't have to fly far, far away. Yay for cedar trees. You know, that's how the legend goes. And that's why the birds some of them like chickadees and blue jays and cardinals don't fly south anymore the cedar takes care of them well i hope you enjoyed that story what do you think nokemis was that a good one? Oh, that was a very good story i love it i love it oh thanks nokemis thanks so much well uh nokemis what do you think it's almost that time, isn't it? I think so. Well, thanks to all of my friends um, for helping me out today. But before we go, I thought maybe we would sing our Balma Peace song. So if you have your, your drums or your sticks or uh, your shakers, dig them out. We're going to sing Balma Pea. Here we go. Balma Pea, men. Bama Piku Waba Men Bama Piku Waba Men Bama Piku Waba Men Weya Heya Heya Ho Weya Heya Heya Ho Weya Heya Heya Ho Weya Kawaba men, until I see your light again. Miigwech to everyone for helping me out. Thanks, Margie. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Leanne. I hope to see you soon. Bama P, everyone. Bama P.